the high-performance F35 has achieved another breakthrough recently. The newly developed enhanced power and cooling system has significantly boosted the performance of the F35, particularly with a cooling rate 2.5 times faster than the existing power and thermal management system of the F35. It may potentially become the cooling system for all future fifth-generation fighters or next-generation air dominance aircraft of the U.S. Air Force. So why did the U.S. military develop this new system? What functions does it serve? The F-35 has a noticeable drawback, which is its limited payload capacity. The internal weapon bays can only accommodate four AIM-120 missiles, whereas the F-22's internal bays can carry eight or more air-to-air -air missiles. While the F-35's four-missile capacity is sufficient for small-scale conflicts, engaging in larger-scale air combat can easily lead to a shortage of ammunition. Therefore, Lockheed Martin has specifically designed a new weapon rack called Sidekick to address this issue. It allows the F-35A and F-35C variants to carry two additional missiles, increasing the payload from four to six missiles, a 50% increase. However, Sidekick does not expand the internal weapon bays but rather utilizes the existing space more efficiently. Therefore, the additional payload is limited to two missiles, specifically the AIM-120 air-to-air -air missiles, which have a smaller diameter. Bulky bombs cannot be accommodated. Additionally, the Sidekick weapon rack is not compatible with the F-35B variant due to the limited internal space occupied by the lift fan, the weapon bay is relatively smaller. Lockheed Martin has indicated that Sidekick may be incorporated into the F-35 Block 4 upgrade program, along with the installation of a new central processor. This upgrade is expected to enhance the F-35's information reception and processing capability by 25 times, improving the aircraft's electronic warfare capabilities. This ensures the stealth capabilities of the aircraft while enhancing its combat effectiveness. In terms of range, the F-35 Block 4 upgrade program intends to replace the fuel tanks with a new type. This improvement is projected to increase the F-35's range by 25%. Currently, the F-35A has a range of 2,200 km, the F-35B has a range of 1,670 km, and the F-35C has a range of 2,500 km. With the installation of the new fuel tanks, the long-range attack capability of the F-35 series aircraft will be significantly enhanced. And another way to enhance the capabilities of the F-35 is by equipping it with more powerful engines. In the 2022 National Defense Authorization Act Budget Review Bill in the United States Congress, there is a requirement for the U.S. Air Force to replace some or all of the engines in the F-35 fleet with new variable cycle engines before 2027. This change aims to increase the range, strengthen operational flexibility, and reduce the reliance on aerial refueling tankers. It is also part of the F-35 Block 4 upgrade program. In recent years, due to frequent deployments, the reliability of F-35 engines has been less than ideal, with many parts not being durable enough, especially the thermal coating on the fan blades, which degrades too quickly. In 2021 alone, 46 F-35 aircraft were unable to fly due to this issue. After budget approval in the 2022 National Defense Authorization Act, plans will be made to replace the engines of the F-35A and F-35C. It is expected that the upgrade of the entire F-35 fleet will be completed in the 2030s. As for the new variable cycle engines for the F-35, there are currently two manufacturers, Pratt & Whitney and General Electric, developing such engines for the NGAD sixth-generation aircraft program. They are the GXA-100 and Pratt and & Whitney XA-101 engines. Both companies have stated that the variable cycle engines can be completed by 2027. Pratt & Whitney is also concurrently working on upgrading the F-135 engine. 
This is because the XA100 and XA101 variable cycle engines are not suitable for the vertical takeoff and landing version of the F-35B. Therefore, if the F-35B does not want to lag behind, it must upgrade the F-135 engine for replacement. Why are variable cycle engines considered good? This is because variable cycle engines can automatically adjust the bypass ratio, which is the ratio of airflow between the external and internal bypass ducts of the turbofan engine. This addresses the dilemma of previous engines, where high bypass ratio engines are fuel efficient but have slower acceleration, while low bypass ratio engines have faster acceleration but consume more fuel. Taking the F-35A as an example, it is estimated that the two new variable cycle engines can increase the maximum range of the F-35A by 30% to 40%, from the current 2,220 km to over 2,860 km. This is part of the Block 4 upgrade program, and more specific details are still classified. The improvement in F-35 performance is inevitable, but it also brings a serious problem, cooling. Cooling is crucial, and to a large extent, the combat effectiveness of advanced fighter aircraft is limited by the performance of their thermal management systems. This is especially true for stealth aircraft like the F-35, which relies on cooling in two main aspects. On the one hand, various onboard electronic devices require effective heat dissipation and cooling. Insufficient cooling can lead to reduced performance, partial functionality shutdown to prevent hardware damage, or even component failures, disconnections, and electrical fires. For example, the radar is one of the key sources of heat on the aircraft. Without proper cooling, the radar becomes non-functional, rendering the F-35 blind. On the other hand, the pilots wearing heavy and hot anti-G suits require sufficient cabin air pressure and oxygen flow to maintain their lives and consciousness. Without low enough cabin temperatures, pilots can easily experience a rapid decline in their flying abilities due to overheating or even heat-induced fainting. In summary, a tactical aircraft with poor thermal management will experience difficulties adapting to harsh weather conditions and will have poor adaptability, reliability, and maintainability. For instance, high temperatures may prevent the aircraft from taking off and executing missions, and the failure rate of onboard equipment increases rapidly. Some Soviet tactical aircraft, for example, cannot conduct extended flight control computer checks while deployed in tropical and subtropical regions due to the lack of air conditioning ducts. It is worth noting that the flight control computer, which consists of numerous discrete components, is prone to component failures and electrical performance drift, requiring frequent checks and maintenance while powered on. So how do fighter jets cool down? In the non-stealth era, tactical aircraft could have numerous small air inlets on the fuselage surface, allowing external airflow to enter and effectively cool the internal areas during high-speed flight. For stealth aircraft, although these inlets are smaller, improper handling of them can compromise the entire aircraft's stealth design. Therefore, the number and size of the openings are significantly reduced, and strict constraints are placed on their shapes and positions, greatly increasing the difficulty of thermal management design for stealth aircraft. That's why the F-35 has been relying on Honeywell's PTMS for cooling. PTMS extracts so-called bleed air from the engine to provide power and cooling to the fighter's radar and advanced sensor packages. However, with the improvement of the F-35 system's performance, the waste heat generated by the onboard equipment is also increasing significantly. The waste heat power of the F-35 Block 3 has reached 30 kW, and it is expected to increase to around 47 kW for the F-35 Block 4. As a result, additional air-driven PTMS is necessary to provide stronger cooling effects. However, this operation comes at the expense of the F-135 engine's lifespan. According to a recent report by the U.S. Government Accountability Office, the additional maintenance costs imposed on the F-35 engine have increased by $38 billion. It is evident that PTMS is struggling to meet the cooling demands of the upgraded F-35. Fortunately, during the recent 54th Paris Air Show, Henry Brooks, 
president of Collins Electric and Controls, a subsidiary of Raytheon Technologies, stated that their enhanced power and cooling system under development can bring performance improvements to the F-35 and meet its cooling requirements throughout its service life. Previously, Raytheon personnel mentioned that the EPAC system had entered the laboratory testing phase. According to publicly available information from Raytheon Technologies, the system consists of onboard air circulation, generators, and control equipment, as well as the Pratt & Whitney provided onboard auxiliary power unit. It can provide cooling rates 2.5 times higher than the existing system for the F-35, reducing the temperature generated during engine operation, thereby enhancing engine performance and extending its lifespan. It can also play a role in aircraft-wide cooling, main engine start, and emergency power start, and can be used as an upgrade kit for the F-35 Block 4. It is expected to reach technology readiness level 6 by the end of this year and begin the engineering, manufacturing, and development phase as early as 2024. However, I believe that the substitution of PTMS with EPAX depends on the situation, particularly whether a new type of engine is being replaced. The performance and framework of the engine determine the aircraft's thermal management capability and power generation capacity. For the engine itself, a large amount of bleed air brings a heavy performance burden since there is a limit to the amount of air it can absorb. The more bleed air used, the less air is available for combustion with fuel, which can lead to fan and compressor malfunctions, causing surges. Once a surge occurs, it can result in severe vibrations, a sharp decrease in thrust, or even engine flameout and damage to components. This is even more unacceptable than reduced thrust and increased fuel consumption. A similar issue exists in power generation for aircraft engines. To extract more power, greater loads must be applied to the turbine and shaft, which creates greater resistance to engine operation. However, Traditional configuration turbofan engines, including the F-119 and F-135, are already struggling to meet the heat dissipation and power supply requirements of future sixth-generation aircraft, as well as heavily upgraded versions like the F-35. Often, improvements come at the cost of sacrificing engine lifespan. On the other hand, upcoming new-generation engines like the XA-100, with their complex three-stream design, have one core function in the outermost third stream, which is to provide high-flow, low-temperature airflow. It claims to have more than twice the waste heat recovery capacity of the F-135. Therefore, future next-generation engines must have more complex regulation capabilities, flexible and variable cycle modes, and be able to provide airflow with significant pressure and flow rate while maintaining a low-temperature state. Only then can they effectively meet the thermal management and power supply requirements of future tactical aircraft. However, until the F-35 is equipped with the new variable cycle engine and before the EPAC system is fully implemented, the currently used PTMS system remains irreplaceable, even if it means sacrificing engine lifespan. Replacing the PTMS system incurs significant costs. Developing, integrating, testing, certifying, producing, and installing the new system all require substantial financial and time investments. Even if the EPAC system has completed testing, there are still steps such as certification, production, and installation to follow. Moreover, as long as the new engine is not fully completed, the EPAC system cannot interact perfectly with it. In comparison, Honeywell's PTMS is highly reliable. It has a strong track record in managing the F-35's advanced technology suite, demonstrating reliability and efficiency. Over the years, it has undergone rigorous testing and actual deployment, becoming a powerful and dependable system. Retaining the PTMS ensures that the F-35 maintains high-performance standards during missions. Furthermore, the PTMS system has been deeply integrated into the overall design and system architecture of the F-35, seamlessly interacting with other critical components and subsystems. This validated integration is the backbone of the F-35's capabilities.
Replacing it hastily may harm operational efficiency and require extensive and highly complex redesign and retesting work spanning several years, resulting in costly delays. Lastly, the PTMS system has been meticulously optimized specifically for the F-35, achieving a perfect balance between power distribution and thermal management. This optimization is crucial for the aircraft's optimal performance, ensuring the flawless operation of the F-35's avionics and computing systems. Compared to traditional systems, PTMS reduces the weight of the F-35 by approximately 1,000 pounds and saves around 10 inches in length. It significantly improves reliability and reduces the life cycle costs of the F-35. PTMS can integrate power sources to meet the main engine startup, auxiliary, and emergency power requirements while providing thermal management for the aircraft's heat load. Moreover, behind the PTMS is Honeywell's expertise and support. Honeywell's contribution to the F-35 program extends beyond providing the PTMS. With decades of experience and profound expertise in aerospace technology, Honeywell has become a valuable partner worldwide in providing support and maintenance services for the F-35. Therefore, until there is absolute certainty, retaining the PTMS is the wisest choice, ensuring that wherever the F-35 is deployed, Honeywell can provide the best maintenance support, avoiding unforeseen challenges and risks resulting from replacement. In conclusion, replacing the PTMS system involves too many interconnected aspects, including the thermal management system. Technical issues arise in heat collection, transfer, and dissipation efficiency, such as how to efficiently collect, transfer, and dissipate heat to minimize compensatory losses for the F-35 aircraft. Improving the control precision and response time of the thermal management system to meet the control requirements of future integrated thermal management systems for fighter aircraft is also a challenge. Currently, the complete list of Block 4 upgrades remains classified and may still undergo certain changes. However, based on the aforementioned details, the performance of the F-35 is continuously strengthening, solidifying its position as the cornerstone of the United States fighter aircraft fleet and a deterrent to adversaries, providing critical advantages for the nation and its global partners.